Thank you, Dr. Pratt and Dr. Williams for having me today. It's a pleasure to be here in Denver, Colorado in person. And with that, these are my disclosures. I want to start with this picture. Many of you have actually seen a patient uh, in a wheelchair. And I want to pose a question. What if you could make a difference in a child's life and reverse this? So for the next 10 minutes, if you can set aside any preconceived notions that you have or biases that you have about the treatment of obesity, and what if you could make a difference in a child's life and reverse this? And what if you could do this by the treatment of obesity and utilization of an anti-obesity medication? We're gonna go through two cases. One is before surgery and one is after surgery. And let's start with case one uh, with a patient of mine, JW, uh, who had weight issues starting at infancy and there's the birth weight there. And then at about nine months, this patient was already 45 uh, pounds. And this patient was actually very active, lived in Hawaii, delivered newspapers and played a lot of sports and um, tried to eat uh, healthy most of the time, but he continued to gain weight. And this is his body habitus progression over time. And by the time we saw him, he already had the onset of complications such as diabetes, obstructive sleep apnea, lymph edema, and disability. And he was 198th of the 95th BMI percentile. When we saw him, by that time, he was told to um, continue to eat less, less and exercise more, and that his BMI was too high, and that he was too fat. That speaks to, it speaks to the bias and stigma. When we take a look at this algorithm that we developed uh, uh, a year or two, uh, actually a few years ago in 2019, um, Dr. Pratt included, we like to start with the center with the adolescent and progress to what we consider microenvironmental targeted therapy or intensive lifestyle changes where we focus on the muscle, the sleep, the stressors, iatrogenic causes. But then there's the option to add on what we call adjunctive um, pharmacotherapy, directed therapy, if the patient is a non-responder or does not meet goals. And certainly the option to proceed with metabolic and bariatric surgery in the, uh, in the purple based on the disease state. And with that, we add to that post-surgical com uh, uh, combinations. Why? Because obesity is a chronic disease. Uh, sometimes you can have relapses and recurrence and uh, recurrence of medical weight related complications. And certainly when these are ch children, they have their entire life ahead of them. So when we start seeing these patients with quote post-surgical uh, weight regain, there's that option to plug these patients directly into pharmacological directed therapy. The criteria is, uh, is defined as uh, when we take a look at pharmacotherapy and bariatric surgery criteria, Certainly if a patient has childhood obesity classified as greater than the 95th percentile, we want to engage the patient in intensive lifestyle therapy. But with that, I want to add that if the patient has a weight related complication, we should promptly add an anti-obesity medication. And then certainly in more severe disease cases, start the conversation about bariatric surgery, uh, surgical consideration. And not only that, but explore the family's rationales and fears around more intensive treatment. The obesity medications reduce the weight uh, mass set point that is set in the CNS. So we have a yin-yang relationship in, in, the, in, um, in the central nervous system. And Lorcastrin is off of the market, but um, all of these medications, they work through um, the CNS pathways in terms of reducing the weight mass set point. And over here, um, they either directly or indirectly uh, activate the POMC uh, pathway, uh, thereby uh, uh, activating the anorexogenic signal, uh, signaling and GLP-1 over here. The efficacy of FDA-approved anti-obesity medications in adults we know can range from about three to about um, nine to 10% based on the clinical trial, but we also have evidence in pediatrics. There are FDA-approved medications in pediatrics, uh, such as fentermine, and uh, fentermine is FDA-approved age greater than 16 years, Orlistat greater than 12 years, and then we have Luraglutide 3.0 milligrams, which is our novel medication, one of the newest hits on the block for 12 to 17 years of age, and the data is very effective for especially the GLP-1 agonist, and set melanotide achieved an orphan indication for rare genetic obesity. 
We do have off-label medications in pediatrics uh, that there is evidence. Metformin is FDA approved for the treatment of diabetes, not FDA approved for the treatment of obesity. But when we look at some of the data that's in the literature search, there is some evidence to support the use of metformin, topiramate. Topiramate is an anti-seizure medication, age greater than two years, but it has some weight loss properties that we can uh, cash in on along with another older DLT-1 agonist, and Listex amphetamine. Listex amphetamine is actually uh, FDA approved for ADHD um, treatment in age greater than six years of age, but it's also approved for binge eating disorder. So oftentimes I prescribe this in my patients that are presenting with ADHD and binge eating disorders. And then semaglutide 2.4, which I'll get you, it's one of our uh, game changer medications. But the bottom line is that these are powerful clinical tools. Obesity is a chronic disease, and we need to utilize synergy and combination therapy to drive weight loss outcomes. So for instance, if we have a patient with severe obesity, which is why all of us are here today, there is going to be early talks about metabolic and bariatric uh, surgical consideration. But perhaps the family needs preparation. The patient needs to be ready. We are going to also combine this treatment with obesity medication and also combine with intensive lifestyle modification. So instead of thinking about these entities in isolations, we need to really come together and think about this in synergy and combination therapy to drive our outcomes. So back to this patient um, where we are in 2022. So I denote this as pre-op new adju uh, adjuvant obesity pharmacotherapy. What do I mean by that? When you have a patient, let's say a child that is presenting with a large tumor uh, prior to surgical resection, that patient may undergo uh, chemotherapy or other types of therapy to shrink the tumor size before proceeding with surgery in order to improve outcomes. So what could we have done differently in this patient by the time he prevent, uh, presented with uh, disability and so forth? Certainly in the early years, we uh, intensive lifestyle therapy had, had, uh, had a role. And anti-obesity uh, pharmacotherapy, uh, perhaps this patient would have had possible resolution of medical um, conditions and prevention of others. What we did for him is that we started pre-op anti-obesity medications with a multidisciplinary team support, and we were able to stabilize his BMI trajectory going down to the 190th of the 95th BMI percentile in preparation for bariatric surgery. So he is enrolled in the bariatric surgery uh, pathway currently. When we look at the timing of, let's say, RYGB complications, and certainly in the early periods, we think about um, uh, these complications as listed over here. But as time progresses, one of the things that we consider is weight regain. And we're starting to see uh, some patients that present with weight regain. So at that timeline, that can present about a year or two years later. But that is a tool. Anti-obesity medications are a tool that we can utilize effectively in this pop uh, population. So concluding with Amy, um, who's a patient as an example of after surgery, she presented with status post vertical sleeve gastrectomy and she had the VSD procedure at the age of 15 years, but now she's presenting to me at 22 years and these are her, her present BMI, this was her nadir BMI had dropped down to at 28.5, but she had pretty much regained all of her weight back and she was complaining of ravenous hunger. And why do I say ravenous hunger? Because these are the hormones, the physiological hormones that are driving her to feel hungry and have cravings over here. Um, so what are our uh, current uh, evidence over here for pharmacotherapies for post-bariatric weight gain? We know that the adult data has shown that multiple medications, anti-obesity medications may be necessary. This is a particular study that came out very recently that looked at the treatment of various anti-obesity pharmacotherapies for patients with post-bariatric weight regain. And what the different shades of gray is um, on the extreme uh, of your left is intensive lifestyle therapy. And in the black is anti-obesity medications that do not include a GLP-1 agonist. And on the right, we um, or the darker gray, is are medications, combination medications that do include a GLP-1 agonist. And these patients actually responded more favorably to these novel medications that were included as part of the regimen. 
So semaglutide 2.4 uh, was approved in 2021, and I bring that out because this medication is currently undergoing um, um, uh, clinical trials in our adolescent population. So hopefully um, when the data comes out in 2023, this is like really exciting. But in the adult data, um, semaglutide is sort of our newest novel uh, GLP-1 agonist. In the placebo group, 2.4%, and in the, these were adult patients with overweight or obesity, um, average, uh, average weight loss was 14.9%. And this is a 12.5% total body weight loss, and over a third of the patients lost greater than 10%, which is significant, and over four-fifths lost about uh, greater than 5%. And this is really exciting because the step teen trial is currently underway, and um, liraglutide, uh, which was uh, recently approved, and here's the data on liraglutide in uh, adolescents from Aaron Kelly's group in 2020, uh, where it shows that it was very highly effective in, uh, in the large cohort of the patients of adolescents losing weight. And this is actually FDA approved for the treatment of adolescents 12 to 17 years of age. So ending with the weight graph of Amy, so what did we decide to do uh, with uh, Amy over here who was uh, coming back after bariatric surgery with weight regain? Uh, we plugged her in with our team and this is actually with the graph over here that shows her first dose of treatment with MS. We started her on combination of fentamine and topiramate. Uh, topiramate is also great for emotional eating and um, sort of stress eating, which she had, and we paired it up with, with fentamine, and we looked at her insurance issues, and these are actually inexpensive medications compared to the other medications that may not be covered by insurance. So this regimen worked really well, well, well for her. And so going down, we continued to try to eat her medications. Uh, at one point, we also adjusted her, her metformin along the course. And by the midpoint, um, about a year or so into the treatment, um, she says, this is the best I've ever felt in a very long time. And uh, we continue to tritate. And here in, um, at that last visit, um, there was a note that all interventions are incrementally normalizing her life. And this is her uh, last weight at 191 pounds. By the time we treated her, she had lost 100 pounds and a total minus 34.3 total body weight loss. And this is her picture. Um, I actually didn't show her your before and after picture, but she was doing fantastic. Uh, so I went back to these two patients and I asked them final learning points. So I'm coming to the SAGES meeting over here and I asked them, what would you do differently or advise your doctors? And this is what JW had to say for you as an audience. Don't wait until I'm debilitated and hospitalized to treat. Use everything you've got and start early. And this is what Amy had to say, and this is the message that she wanted to convey to you as an audience. It's a lifelong battle, and I'm glad that they're coming out with new medications to treat the obesity. I feel so much better now, even after the surgery, and I'm glad my doctor did not think it was my fault I regained the weight. So with that, I want to conclude with those final thoughts. Thank you so much.